Hey guys, great to be here. I'm Kelly Day. I'm COO of Viacom CBS Networks International. I'm really excited to be here with all of you today, and I am particularly excited um, to be asking the questions today instead of answering them. Um, I have a fantastic um, guest with me today who I'm really excited to talk to. Uh, I would love to introduce you guys to Kenny Mitchell, who is the CMO of SNAP. Hey, Kenny. Hello, hello. Great to see Hi. you. <laughs> it is great to see you too. Um, the last time Kenny and I did something like this together was a few years ago. So uh, it's been a couple of years. We were on stage then. So this time we're on the virtual stage, but super fun to be back with you. Um, so thanks for doing this with us today. Sure appreciate it. Th those were um, the days when we could be in <laughs> together. <laughs> those were the days when you could actually do these things in person. Um, so let's just start with a general catch up because a lot's happened in the last couple of years. So it's been, um, I guess a little over a year since you came to SNAP as its first CMO ever. Um, so can you just tell us how it's going? How's it been? Oh man, it's it's been an amazing ride um, so far. So, you know, I uh, came on board um, right at the beginning of last summer. So I just crossed my year mark in uh, last month in June. Um, and it's been like a really wonderful and, and fascinating and exciting, exciting journey. So, um, you know, I've spent a lot of time kind of getting to know, um, you know, a completely new category, um, a completely new um, industry, um, having spent most of my career in kind of uh, food and beverage and, and sports. Um, um, helping to, to build up um, what, what, what we um, hope to be a world-class marketing organization in, in support of, of, you know, some of our ambitious uh, goals here. And, um, you know, also moving locations. I spent the last uh, 15 years in Chicago and now I'm in uh, California in LA. So, um, you know, I, I will say that it's you know, I, it could have been a worse place to be quarantined, <laughs> um, totally. you know, um, over the last few months. So, so really been, uh, been, been getting, getting ourselves settled in here. That's awesome. I didn't realize that you had moved to California. How do you like it? Um, you know what? It's, it's uh, better than advertised. Um, I'd spent a ton of time <laughs> in LA um, as, as a marketer. You know, you do, do shoots out here. I work with a, a great advertising agency out here. There are programs and events out here. But uh, most of my time in LA was spent in a hotel and going to like, you yeah. know, kind of unique, unique events and whatnot. So now being here as a resident, um, kind of getting settled in, getting the learn um you know the county actually which is like even new for me it's like la county it's not like just like one city it's like a you know 80 90 cities together um but just getting to know the the, the area and, and getting to take it all in um has, has been a lot of fun totally well snap has certainly um done a lot for la and you know building a, a great community there and a, a tech community uh, in Southern California. So I'm sure it's super exciting to be part of that. Um, so, uh, you know, you've spent a lot of your career working for big brands, right? People like McDonald's and Gatorade. And now you've moved over to the platform side of things. So what's it like to kind of I, I, I'm not sure which side is the dark side to tell you, the truth, but you know, what, what's it like to go from, you know, essentially being, being a buyer to being a seller or, you know, sort of moving from the brand side over to the platform side. How's that experience been for you? Oh, it's, it's been really, really fascinating. I'd, I'd say, you know, I, I spent the preponderance of my career at, at PepsiCo on, on the Gatorade business. Um, I'd most recently been at McDonald's and now, now being here, it's it's interesting to see where kind of the center of gravity of those businesses actually lie. So if you look at um, at PepsiCo and Gatorade, the center of gravity was really around sales and marketing. Those were like the big engines that actually helped to drive the business. That's where you and I actually had an opportunity to work together, yep. um, and, and you know, on some on some projects. Um, then going to McDonald's, 
it actually is a more of an operations led organization, meaning as a marketer, if you want to do a really cool program, it may require you to get quarter pounders into the 14,000 restaurants across the US. So nothing actually happens unless you have that operations engine really well wired in, you know? Um, yeah. And coming to, to Snap, um, it's been interesting as I've been getting kind of like a lay of the land. This, this is very much a product driven organization. Um, that is the center of gravity for, you know, a, a consumer products uh, company in the consumer internet world. And um, a lot of what, you know, we've been doing is uh, over the last um, several months is just figuring out what are the ways that, you know, marketing can help the business grow, help tell its story, help grow the community, help grow our advertiser base. And then that like kind of uh, points to one of the big distinctions that, you, that you're talking about is, I am now on uh, of a double agent. <laughs> I am a buyer of advertising <laughs> as a platform, and I also yep. um, have an advertising uh, business, um, you know, uh, media business. Um, so being on both sides of the coin is actually really interesting. There, there have been meetings that I've sat in, and I'm like, hold on, who, who's selling who in this discussion? <laughs> Are, are you looking for us to invest and advertise with you or are we looking to do the, you know, the same? So um, that, that's been one unique uh, wrinkle um, that has been like interesting to navigate. Uh, but, but, but overall, it's been, it's been really nice. That's great. That's awesome. Um, hopefully you guys don't hear too much background noise. Uh, I'm, I'm actually... Uh, on vacation this week, technically, which means I'm living in a house full of teenagers. So uh, we'll, we'll try to keep the background noise as minimal as, as it can. Um, the good news is I've got lots of focus groups here about but lots of SNAP users uh, in the house this week and, um, you know, lots of back and forth um, using uh, lenses and backgrounds and stuff, which, which speaking of, um, last month, I guess it was about a month ago, you guys had your partner summit and there were tons of announcements that came out of it. Um, lots of new announcements, everything from new original shows to, um, new lenses, new features in augmented reality. Um, you know, it's long been said that, you know, Snap, it really is a fantastic product company and, and really visionary in terms of, um, kind of pushing new features and new products forward. So I'm curious, um, you know, w what are you super excited about, Kenny? Like, what do you think, you know, amongst all of those things are, are the ones that we should really be paying attention to? And, um, you know, VidCon is obviously about creators and celebrating the creative community. Um, if you were giving some advice to creators, what would you tell them about using these tools? Awesome, awesome. So great, great question. And I'll, I'll start with the fact that our, um, our partner summit um, last month um, was a massive um, Herculean effort um, that was run essentially across our, our, our just about every node um, of our business. So we have um, amazing, um, you know, product people, as you mentioned, who, um, who, who helped to create so many of the unique like features and new products that we, that we launched and shared. We have amazing partnership team that is, you know, embarked on many of the content and um, and and uh, creator partnerships that we that we showcased and highlighted. You know, we do a tremendous amount in the AR space. So it was it was really interesting because it's a celebration of all of the work that happens across the company. And then there's a a subset of us who help to um, to to try and bring it bring it to life, which was uniquely challenging, <laughs> as you can imagine, um, doing it um, virtually and you know through the the visionary leadership of, uh, of Evan, who um, kind of really identified like a really um, interesting way to, for us to, to bring it to life and really uh, pushed us to, 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 to do it in a really innovative fashion. We were, we were, we were excited to kind of, you know, celebrate um, our partners um, and so much of our innovation through, through, through the Partner Summit. And there was like so much that was announced. It's amazing the amount of innovation that came through that uh, um, the summit. So it, it, you know, I could probably park on a few things that I thought were were, were really exciting. But we just we just uh, announced so many things that were that were really fun. I I probably would start with you know part of our bread and butter is just the the augmented reality side of our our business and 
Um, you know, one of the things that we fundamentally believe is that the success of the advancement in the future of augmented reality is going to really depend on having like a large, diverse, and vibrant community of creators um, that'll help us identify what is the, the future of the next um, experience or utility through AR that we can that we can create together. Um, and you know, as a part of that, we had a big focus on the Lens Studio um, during the Partner Summit. And Lens Studio essentially is something that we launched a few years ago, which are uh, more or less the same tools that our AR creators use to make our AR experiences that have been democratized um, and shared. Literally, it's something you can download right now um, at uh, Lens Studio, so you can actually be in, begin creating AR experiences. There's tutorials on there. There's like different kind of like, um, you know, kind of toolkits and examples. And it's, it's something that um, we've been really, really excited about because um, through Lens Studio, we actually have had over a million different lenses that have been created by our community, um, which is really, really phenomenal. And you can actually go into our, amazing. Um, our platform and search for those lenses and actually use them um, in, in, in real time, things that were actually created um, by, by, by some of our creators. And um, one of the big announcements that happened at uh, the Partner Summit was actually around what we call Snap ML. So using your, um, your machine learning models and actually porting them into Lens Studio to use machine learning to create even more amazing um, features um, in, um, through, through, through our lenses. So, oh, wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so it's super duper exciting. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of an advancement. And, and again, we, we kind of see this world where we have like these legions of creators that are just helping to, to advance what AR means and in terms of engagement and fun, as well as is, is potential utility for, for brands. So that's one thing that I was super duper um, excited about, something that I dabble with myself. And I recommend, you know, and you'd ask for advice for creators, if you have creators that may be interested in using AR for storytelling, which can be really, really fun, um, I'd say, you know, jump in, download Lens Studio, um, start exploring, start getting started, having a little bit of fun. It's a free desktop application. Um, it's lensstudio.snapchat.com. There's like templates and guides, and it's a really, really cool way to kind of get your feet wet. And, um, you know, we, we kind of envision um, using AR to enhance storytelling being something that's really uh, meaningful in the future. That's great. That's a super great suggestion. I know when we were rehearsing, you you were kind of playing around with some of the lenses and stuff yourself, maybe. Are you going to demonstrate for us? or? You know, we, we, um, we are working on our integration with Zoom right now. So we'll have some okay. stuff to announce relatively soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, we were on a, a, a bit of a different platform uh, when we were having our, our prep call. So I was got able it, to play, play around a little bit. But that, uh, be, be on the lookout um, actually in, in the coming weeks for some, some, uh, some, some announcements from our, our team that we're really excited about. Awesome. Well, that'll be fun. And, you know, since, since we're all spending our whole lives on video conference now, I'm sure that, um, the, you know, that'll be a very, very popular uh, feature. So um, super fun. Yeah. Um, switching gears a little bit, one of the other um, big things that you guys announced at the uh, Partner Summit was a ton of new original shows, um, both unscripted and you've been doing a lot more in the scripted space lately. So originally, when you guys got into original shows, there was a lot of unscripted shows. Um, now it seems like you're making um, an even bigger push into scripted. Um, we'd love to hear about, um, you know, really like what's the strategy around original shows? Um, how do you find that they work for the audience? Like, you know, um, Snapchat has such a huge Gen Z, 13 to 24 audience. Um, what do they love about engaging in the shows? Have you noticed anything different since we've been, you know, in this this quarantine situation? Or, you know, what can you share with us about it? Because I know it's a big part of Snap's strategy in reaching young audiences. Yeah, yeah, that's a <clears throat> great, great question. And, um, you know, we, you know, we, we started, I'd say, the content journey in earnest in 2015 with the launch of our Discover platform with a variety of publishers. 
And um, then as we moved into 2018 is when we really started to, um, to, to, to launch into some of our originals programming. And I, I could tell you that it's, um, we've really benefited from having a several year, <laughs> like, you know, kind of horizon to understand like what, what, what makes sense and resonates with our community. Um, and how do we kind of like really think about storytelling from a mobile um, perspective? And that's part of what makes the Snap Originals uh, program so unique. Like they really resonate with our community and they're made exclusively for Snapchat and they're really unique to mobile. Um, and, you know, it's a, it, the storytelling approach is pretty, pretty interesting. They're typically pretty concentrated storytelling. So the, the length of time is like three to five minutes. Um, it's full screen. It's highly immersive. They are vertical. It's, it's like literally paced for mobile. It's, so it's like hyper, hyper visual. We use split screens. We use, you know, quick cuts and, and all of these things that feel like highly intuitive from a mobile perspective. Like one of my well, you guys have really kind of driven that format, the, you know, the vertical video format and, you know, really kind of pushing that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a big testament to, to Evan and Bobby, our co-founders, they, they, they had a vision that, that, you know, vertical video and vertical imagery was the future. Um, and, you know, um, they, they, they were a bit, a bit ahead of the game on that and it's uh, obviously come, come to fruition. So uh, because of that, we've, we've we've benefited from like having just a uh, a bit of a head start on how to how to do you know excellence from a storytelling perspective. One one of my favorites is this show Dead at Night, um, and it's kind of like a, a zombie uh, type show that that does like a cool you know integration of like what screen reality is happening, but also integrating like how you use your phone to message and to communicate and to call. So all of these things are woven in like really fun and in a really natural and, and immersive way, which is, which, is, which is really great. And, you know, today, um, Snap Originals, they're being watched by over half of the Gen Z population in the US, as an example. Um, That's a crazy and, stat. That is just a huge stat. It's a massive stat, right? It's, it's, um, it's a testament to the platform that the, that the content team is, has built. Um, um, and, you know, we've had programs where you just think about um, how we think about our, our, our talent, for example. So, you know, Endless is one of our programs that stars Summer McKean and Dylan Jordan. Um, Nikita Unfiltered is another program that, that, that stars Nikita Dragon. And these are talent that our audience and our community absolutely love with storylines that really get them hooked and, and, and using some of the frameworks that I talked about in terms of mobile, mobile storytelling. Um, and it's really delivered for us. So, you know, when Nikita, which just launched um, in March, we had over 22 million people um, that watched, uh, watched uh, that, that, uh, that program in that series. And with Endless, which is one of our bigger series, it's reached over 38 million unique viewers. So like really, really <laughs> massive numbers. And, and what, what makes us particularly proud is that um, of the Snapchatters who actually completed the whole series, like 90% of them finished the whole series within the first few weeks. Like, so they're binge watching like it's nobody's business. Um, and, um, you know, so, so binge watching in mobile, it, it, people talk about it all the time. We're, we're seeing it um, absolutely in, in real time. Um, oh, I, I definitely see it in my house, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's really exciting. And it's, it's a place um, also where we've, we've seen kind of this continuum in, in particular for creators um, where, We'll have someone who is a snap star, you know, so they, they, they have um, a large um, following and community on the platform. Oftentimes we may go into a, um, a, a, a show that's featuring them from a talent perspective that then maybe moves into an original. So like just kind of like being able to, to kind of leverage the full ecosystem from an engagement perspective is, is, is really powerful. And it's something that we've really been focused on for, for, for our, our creator community. Well, you've been, I mean, personally, like at the forefront of content as marketing, right? Like as a marketer in your career, you know, I, I, you've 
been uh, definitely trying to push it forward. And I would say have been one of those people that kind of got early on how to use content, even scripted content, as a way to market your brand and your platform. So, you know, have you found that to be effective at Snap? Um, is that something that you're using kind of personally in, in your CMO role at Snap? And do you find that brands, for example, are really finding that to be effective on Snap? Or how do you think about that? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. And I can talk about it probably with two different hats on. One is, a, uh, is an advertiser um, who is looking to do storytelling and then um, as, as a CMO here. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I believed fundamentally several years ago, and I, I, I still believe it today, is that most uh, or many advertising um, platforms or mediums that, that, that have been, you know, legacy platforms, you know, people have been looking for ways to avoid advertising. <laughs> so <laughs> some of the best ways for you to actually tell storytelling is, or to, to tell your brand story is through storytelling, right? Um, and that can be done through, you know, scripted formats that can be done through um, brand experiences that can be done through non-scripted formats. But if you're able to weave your brand's narrative like organically into a story, um, then you're actually advertising <laughs> without doing an ad. Um, and that is like magic uh, in, in, in a lot of cases. So um, definitely had success and experience with that as, a, as an advertiser. Um, on the Gatorade business, um, on the McDonald's business, I think we, we did a really fun scripted program when you're with Awesomeness um, when I was at Gatorade that was really focused on getting young ladies um, to engage in sports. Um, because um, one of the big insights we knew was that um, it was over 90% of women that were VP and above and um, Fortune 500 companies were former athletes. Um, yet at the same time, they were actually, um, young ladies were dropping out of sports at kind of an alarming rate. So we wanted to shine a light on, um, on, on the importance of, of sports, as well as some of the challenges um, that a female may, might face um, uh, as an athlete. Um, and we thought, what better way to do that than, you know, taking advantage of some of the cultural trends we saw around um, content consumption with teens and young adults um, with, with, uh, with scripted programming. So that literally was kind of the impetus of, of us partnering together. That program was, was, was as you know, um, uh, uh, pretty wildly successful. We're, we're pretty pleased about it. Um, and, you know, at, at Gatorade, as well as at McDonald's, we had a history of, of embarking on, on that, that type of storytelling. And what we've seen at Snap is that um, many brands have actually been able to kind of connect um, with their, 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 um, their consumer through storytelling and through potential integrations and partnerships as it relates to, um, to uh, scripted um, and or, um, or un unscripted uh, programming. So one good example is something that we're excited about with our partner Verizon um, here at Snap is we have a, a, a show um, called Fake Up um, that literally is using kind of the um, the, the the notion of using um, you know makeup and design to create these really cool experiences and then almost like mimicking those experiences through AR um, that make it accessible those those designs to um, to to our community and it really being powered. Um, by you know 5G and, and, and the ability to to um, to, to, to leverage uh, technology to help um, showcase those experiences. We've we've also seen other brands that uh, that, have, that have partnered with some of our content platforms in the fashion world, connected to our um, Dead Girl Detective Agency program, where you know um, some of the, the the talent in there were actually leveraging some of the the um, the, 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 um, the, the brands um, to to help um, drive some connectivity. So. Um, have certainly seen both on the scripted, the unscripted, the brand integration um, 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 angle, um, really good ways for, for, for brands to help tell their story um, through content. Those are all great examples. And, um, you know, I, I, I agree with you entirely that, um, you know, storytelling really is one of the most powerful ways um, to get that across. Um, you know, it, while we're on the topic of brands, 
um, you know, does, is there any advice or, you know, that we've probably got a lot of uh, agency and marketing executives hopefully joining uh, our conversation today. Any advice you would give them about partnering with SNAP and, you know, the best way to be effective on SNAP, um, you know, as you guys continue to evolve the platform? Um, what, what's some of the best advice you can give to brands? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And thank, thank you for asking. I think what, what I hark back to is um, as an advertiser, I was, um, you know, prior to coming to Snap, I was highly, highly bullish on the, the platform. And there were um, kind of a few reasons for that. Um, one is um, a unique, um, scaled and highly um, attractive audience. Um, so no one has um, a connection to more um, 13 to 24 year olds in the U.S. than SNAP does. Period. Um, and um, you know, SNAP has um, you know more um, 13 to 34 year olds um, than Facebook or Instagram. It's it's it is a place to find a, a really. Um, a really unique um, consumer audience. And I experienced that firsthand at Gatorade, kind of dealing with our young athletes. And they were the first to tell us about Snapchat. And that's when we really started to, um, to really get engaged with it as a, as a, as a potential platform. Um, the second thing that, I, uh, that really attracted me was the creativity between, behind the ad prompts. So like literally whatever you wanted to do, if you had a creative mind, you could find a way to tell your message on Snap, whether it be through the video ads, um, whether it be through AR, whether it be through content integration with some of the um, content integration or original programming um, through, through the, the content world, um, through the creative tools, it's like literally just about anything you wanted to do um, was possible. So, you know, when I was at Gatorade, we did the dunk um, of the, the Gatorade product around the Super Bowl through AR. We did a game featuring Serena Williams, an 8-bit game through Snap. We did an animated um, series with Usain Bolt all through Snap. So like literally the, the, the limitation is only your creativity. <laughs> um, and you know, the, the thing that's that's also been um, really um, compelling to me as I've come on board is I actually didn't have as much of an appreciation for the scale of the of the of the, the Snapchat audience. So, um, you know, over 229 million um, daily active users um, globally and just here in the US, um, while the platform is known for skewing fairly young. We have more people that are 25 and older as daily active users in the U.S. than Twitter has as monetizable daily active users in all of the U.S. for all age groups. So it, it's it's kind of wow. mind-boggling the scale um, I of, had no of idea. our platform. And part of it is because it's a closed platform. So we don't have virality naturally with our platform. This is more of a communication utility for you and your friends. So you're talking one-to-one -one or one-to-few, or it's a content and engagement platform where you might play games, you might view some original content, et cetera. But we don't have those virality aspects. Um, so because of that, it's like our, our, our platform doesn't punch above its weight class in the way that it could. <laughs> um, and what ends up happening, if something really cool happens on Snapchat, how do you learn about it? You learn about it on a platform that actually can go viral, like a, like a, like a Twitter or an Instagram or something like that, where our platform is built a little bit differently. And we're, we're, there was tremendous wisdom in that in our inception. So it's kept us out of um, harm's way when it comes to um, you know, brand safety related issues, privacy related issues and things like that. But it also, it, it, it creates a bit of an uphill battle for me as a marketer to like help tell our, our brand story um, in a place that, that, that is a, a closed platform and doesn't, doesn't have the, the virality components to it. Um, the, the last piece I would say as I'm, as I'm uh, talking to, to marketers out there is our ad products are actually highly performant. Um, so, you know, whether you are looking for um, things that are, you know, upper funnel to tell brand stories um, and to drive awareness, 
um, or if you're looking for like literal conversion um, from, um, you know, from a app download or a purchase or, or what have you, um, you know, the team has worked incredibly, incredibly hard, um, really, um, you know, uh, in, uh, affecting and improving um, ad performance to, to, to the tune of, of um, having a business now that is, um, that, that has a material component of it that is direct response because the ads are, are so performant. So it's, um, you know, to me, I, I think it's actually a really interesting time if I'm an advertiser. I think my, one of my buddies, uh, Gary V, he always talks about undervalued attention. Um, and Snap is actually, it's a bit of an arbitrage right now. It won't be like that forever. But if I'm an advertiser, I'd be looking for ways to get this highly attractive um, audience that is difficult to find at a pretty big scale with really cool, creative, uh, you know, um, uh, add tools to, to help do that. Well, you certainly make a, a compelling pitch. I'm sure, I'm sure your sales guys like to, uh, take you out on the road with them or, or, or virtually on the road as it is. Um, because, uh, you, you certainly give a very compelling pitch for, uh, working with snap, um, so before I, we start to run out of time, I want to make sure that we spend a little bit of time talking about creators and the creative community, because obviously, you know, we're here at VidCon. VidCon was created and founded around um, really celebrating everything about online video and online creators. Um, and as you mentioned earlier, Snap kind of has its own ecosystem of creators. Um, you know, some people who have, you know, maybe started out on other platforms like YouTube and things like that, but many who started on Snap are loyal to Snap um, and continue to um, create things for Snap. Um, how do you guys think about working with creators? What are some of the opportunities for creators? Um, I'm sure we have creators listening to this chat. So um, what would you like to say to the creator community out there about partnering with and working with them? First and foremost, I'd say join us. <laughs> Come join us. We'd love to, uh, love to talk to you. I'd say, uh, you know, creators have been a really important part of our ecosystem um, and I'd say particularly most recently, let's say since about 2018, um, we really ramped up our focus on creators um, with a real focus on like product development in particular over the last few years. Um, and we've learned, we've leaned into creators um, in priority areas like content and AR. Um, so in the content space, you know, we, we really expanded our Snapstars program which now has thousands of, um, of creators worldwide. And we're gonna look to continue to grow that. Um, and more creators than ever are participating in our show's product, which um, are monetized with Snap ads and commercials. So nice you know, opportunity to, uh, to, 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 um, to do business together. Um, and, you know, some, we have some recent, you know, creator led, um, you know, Snap Originals um, with uh, Wild Black by MK Asante, um, you know, one of our uh, bigger celeb creators was with Will Smith, um, he did the Will from Home, from Home show, which was one of my favorite shows. Um, uh, this uh, dur during um, the heart of, um, you know, the beginning of, of our, our, our lockdown. Um, but as I mentioned, yeah, he's been doing amazing things. Talk about a talented family. Jeez. Oh yeah. Amazing things. And his show, um, performed incredibly well. And, 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 and uh, you know, it was a good kind of respite, uh, <laughs> while we were going through the, the, the hardest parts, um, of, of the beginning of the, of the lockdown. Um, we, we recently announced some new creator led shows with, um, coach Kev with Kevin Hart and, um, road trip in with Ricky Thompson and Denzel um, Dion and Queens of Styles with uh, with our hairstylist um, Tokyo Style. So lots going on kind of in, in that space. And then when we think specifically about like product development, like what are some things that we've done to kind of improve the, the experience? Like, you know, Snap has really been focused on building out tools for creators to help them better create on Snap. And this includes helping them grow and be more discoverable. Um, through our profiles and 
um, understanding some of their performance um, through our, our insights and, you know, and having these, these permanent identities through some of our, our highlights product, as well as managing their accounts a little bit better and, and even communicating with, with, with fans in a different way than we have in the past. So, um, you know, we, as a part of the partner summit, we announced like story replies where you can actually reply directly to, um, to, to fans privately. Um, through through Snap and, and and quoting, or you can actually quote them and and and, and bring those into um, into other um, assets that 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 you create. We've also oh, that's seen. Great. I didn't realize that. That's a great yeah. feature. Yeah, yeah. So those are some 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 new announcements we've had, and you know we we also have been um, having good success supporting e-commerce for creators through our um, Shopify integration. Um, so, you know, any creator who has, you know, merch and, you know, they, they have um, access to this um, Shopify store, they can like kind of embed that into their profile. We actually do not take a penny um, of revenue associated with it. So it's just another way for them to connect um, well with their, their, their fans and, and monetize their presence. Um, and, you know, the this is mainly about some of the, the creator talent, but we also do a tremendous amount with like AR creators um, that, 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 that create lenses that our, our community um, leverages. So many of them, we've actually helped to create kind of these permanent profiles where they can showcase some of the awesome AR work that they've done. Um, and um, many of them have done work for um, public phys figures, for record labels, for artists. Um, we, we help to facilitate those in, in, um, in, in many cases and, and um, give them a bit of a platform to showcase uh, some, some of their, their creativity. There's um, gonna be more coming. I was, I was uh, told to, to give a bit of a plug because I know that um, in VidCon there's a workshop in September um, that our team is, is um, gonna be participating in where they're gonna share um, some additional kind of new developments and highlights um, in support of creators. So uh, encourage everyone to stay tuned for that. All right, we will. That's super cool. Um, I'm sure we have a lot of people hopefully joining us, maybe even from outside the U.S. One of the benefits of VidCon going virtual is that you don't have to be in Anaheim this year to join us. You can be outside the U.S. Um, and so um, can we talk just for two minutes about how things are going outside the US. Um, you've had a couple of countries like Saudi Arabia, for example, where the growth has been um, pretty explosive. What do you, what, how do you guys think about your international business? Is there something, is there something unique to a country like Saudi Arabia? Like what, what do you think makes Snap um, kind of take off in certain places? How are you thinking about that? You know, it's it's um, it's really interesting. We have um, some markets around uh, the world that that are very very strong for us. So if you look at the U.S., U.K., France, Canada, and Australia, that um, its reach among thirteen to twenty four year olds are are massive, um, and are um, and we reach more than than Facebook or Instagram in in those locations and. And, you know, we also have seen really strong growth in places like the UK and in France and Canada and, 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 um, and, and continued growth in Australia. And we're growing even faster in some emerging markets like India, where we grew over 100% um, our, 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 our daily active users um, year over year. Um, there are some um, countries and cultures that just lend themselves well to like this either this communication use case, you know, because Snap at, at its core is about, con you know, um, connecting quickly and, and, and communicating visually with your, your good friends um, and, and family. Um, so there are certain cultures where that just really, really resonates. Um, so we've, um, Saudi Arabia, which you mentioned, I'd say broadly um, kind of MENA, um, the, the Nordics um, has been another place where we've seen this, um, this, 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 uh, this really um, take hold as well. Um, so, um, and, and I think that over the, you know, the fullness of time, um, we believe strongly in this, this notion of um, communicating visually um, with, um, with, with those that are, that are close to you, um, your, your good friends and, and your family. And, and, and that is a behavior that we've clearly seen demonstrated um, by, um, by, by this generation we call the Snapchat generation. It's something that we, we, we see continuing that it's, uh, you know, 
video and text is a lot more compelling than 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 sending um, you know vid videos and photos a lot more compelling than sending a text a lot more expressive um, makes you feel that much closer and um, we, we believe that you know over, again over the fullness of time that we'll continue to see um, to see growth um, as, as that use case and that behavior um, 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 continues to continues to settle well, certainly uh, the last few months have shown us that, um, you know, video and, you know, talking to each other over these, anyone can do it. Everyone's doing it all the time. We're all on video all the time. And so, um, you know, hopefully that, that speaks well to what you're talking about and uh, certainly bodes well for the future. And, um, you know, now that I've moved over to the international side of our business, we should, you know, continue to talk more about what you guys are doing uh, internationally because um, we're very interested in that. All right, last question, because I know we only have um, five minutes left. Um, you know, speaking of being locked down, um, the last few months, uh, the U.S. has been going through a lot. So between our health crisis with the pandemic, uh, economic recession, um, the recent protests around racial and social injustice, um, you know, people have been dealing with a lot. And social media platforms are often at the center of the conversation for for a couple of reasons. One, that's where the conversation happens. Obviously, um, we're all using lots of social media platforms like Snap um, to communicate with each other more than we ever have. Um, but there's also been, you know, a, a flip side to it, which is that, you know, there can be a lot of misinformation and things like that um, that gets, you know, posted and sent around through social media platforms. Snap has for the most part, managed to stay above the fray. You guys have not um, kind of been thrown into the conversation as much as, for example, Facebook or Twitter. Um, so, you know, as the CMO, as the ambassador for the brand, um, you know, we would love to, I would love to hear your thoughts about um, how, how does Snap continue to walk that line between, um, supporting free speech, supporting people's First Amendment rights, um, but also being an advocate for truth and justice and, you know, things that we just know are, are the right thing to do. And obviously, these are conversations that I think many of us are going to have um, for, for many months, years uh, to come. But I would really love to hear how you and, and how SNAP is thinking about that, because I'm, I'm sure it, it, it's coming up a lot lately. <laughs> yeah, you, you're you're absolutely right. It's um, it's it's just been such a remarkable time to think that we have you know, um, you know a, a a pandemic the likes of which we haven't seen since the Spanish flu of of 1919. We have unemployment um, the likes of which we haven't seen since uh, the Great depression and we have racial and, you know, civic demonstrations alike of which we haven't seen since um, the civil rights movement. And all of that has happened in Q2 of uh, 2020. So it's, um, it's really remarkable um, kind of what we've seen and, and what's been going on. And, you know, obviously there, there's been a lot of discussion around the role that, um, that, that, you know, social media platforms um, may play in, in so, so many of the things that, that, that are going on. And I think this is one place where um, I feel um, um, both um, thankful um, for, for um, the insight that, um, that Evan and Bobby had in the development of the platform. Um, and fortunate that we get to talk about that as we're going around to our various partners and, and, and advertisers and community. Because since the beginning, you know, Snapchat was designed to really support real friendships and to help our community learn about the world through trusted partners. So the team made very deliberate decisions early on to build Snapchat differently than traditional social media. So there are no likes, there are no public comments, there's no open news feed. There's no viral content. There's no unfettered accounts. It's like the platform is just completely different in that way. 
Um, and, um, you know, in this way, Snapchat is, it's a closed platform, as I mentioned before, and it's a curated platform. Um, and that design really limits the spread of hate speech, of racism, of um, misinformation and things like that. So you're right, we've kind of stayed out of the fray because we were built like that um, from the beginning. Snapchat's not a town square or a town hall where you can post anything for everyone to see. Um, and you know, our content platform that we talked about, it's actually, it's, it's both closed and it's curated by us. So we are actually making decisions on what are the things that we promote um, and what are the things that we showcase. So we don't have this like megaphone for like unfettered, <laughs> you know, whatever it might be across our platform. Um, so, you know, our Discover platform is kind of like a television network. Snap helps to choose which partners and shows run on Discover. And this curation actually helps to provide safety for our, our community. Um, and we know that you're getting information that is safe and trustworthy and accurate from our, our, our selected um, partners. And in, in addition to that, we actually fact check all of our ads, um, whether political or not political. Um, so everything goes through a human review. Um, and if it doesn't meet our guidelines, um, then, then, then it doesn't run. So those, um, you know, being built the way that we have been built, and some of the very purposeful decisions um, has helped to really set us apart as a platform. And we, we, we continue to really have this um, focus on service, servicing our community and trying to do that in, 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 in the best way we can. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the effort, frankly, that we've been talking about um, recently, Kelly, is like we have an election coming up right now. And um, last year, I'm um, sorry, with the... Um, the mid-year cycle of 2018, um, we, we, we were fortunate enough to actually help register 400, over 450,000 um, Snapchatters, many of them first-time voters. And of that group- 50, Yeah, you guys had a very successful get out the vote campaign, yeah, right? Yeah, we did. And of that, not just registering, but of that group that registered through Snapchat, over 57% of them actually went out and voted and exercised their right, um, which is amazing. Because 18 to 29 year olds, usually it's about a third of them that actually show up. So we had like really good turnout. So we think one of the most um, powerful forms of self-expression is actually civic engagement. And we're seeing it on the street with the protests. So we, we as, a, as a company are going to be leaning in really hard to try to encourage our community to, to, to essentially go out and, and express yourself through the best form of it, the most impactful form of it, um, which, is, which is through voting. So you'll see from us a tremendous amount of tools around registration, around education um, in a very nonpartisan way. Like these are just the facts and you can kind of make your decision as well as like, how can we help you get to the polls? How can we educate you on where your poll location is? How can we send you reminders to actually get out there? So, that is something that we're, we're, we're going to be um, focusing uh, pretty heavily on um, as we, we lead into the election cycle. And it's something that, that we're, we're excited about. All right. Well, that is all incredibly important. And uh, I appreciate you sharing that with us and sharing that with the audience. Um, I know that we are a few minutes over time. You, you, uh, have something you need to get off to. So we're not gonna keep you any longer, but it was really, really fun to catch up with you, Kenny. It was such a good conversation. Um, I've got like 10 more questions I could ask you, but we'll have to save it for the next chat. All right, but well- Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Um, this, was, this was a whole lot of fun. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of VidCon and, uh, and enjoys the rest of the week. All right, take care. See ya.